Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna show you two leopard geckos that we adopted and how we set up our own bioactive vivarium and kept it simplified so you can do it too. These two little cuties were in a pretty small and simple setup. They came from a family that just didn't have enough time for them. So we're going to take them home and set them up a large bioactive vivarium. But what is a bioactive vivarium and how does it work? Simply put, it's mother nature just doing her thing, except inside of an enclosure. Everything living produces waste and everything alive eventually dies and naturally decays to go back into the earth. It's the cycle of life and what keeps our planet alive. There are as many living organisms in a teaspoon of healthy soil as there are people on the planet. Every living thing plays a specific role to work together for the greater good. No matter how big or how small, if it's alive, it holds a significant importance to our ecosystem. From the smallest ant to the tallest tree, from the birds flying in the sky to the fish swimming in the sea, each and every creature is part of the biodiversity family. We are all connected. I'm going to do my best to keep it simple and easy to understand. The most important part of a bioactive setup is having the right substrate with proper drainage. Then we'll be adding as many hideouts and plants as possible. I'm also going to be adding rocks and sticks for a more natural look. You can find thousands of products online, Amazon, eBay, even your local pet store. Just be sure to do your research. Every living creature has special needs and a specific habitat. Some may require a higher humidity, while others may thrive in a drier climate. Whatever exotic friend you decide to bring home, just be sure that you can provide the essentials to give them their best life. We are very blessed to live in Big Sky, Montana, so we're going to nature to collect most of the materials we need for this bioactive vivarium. We went to a creek close to our house where I knew it was safe from pesticides or weed killer or any kind of chemicals. It was definitely all natural. I found my perfect substrate, soil mixed with sand that I'm gonna use for the second layer. Then we found some nutrient rich mulch that we're gonna use for the third layer. Then we collected plenty of leaf litter to help house our bioactive cleanup crew, which we're going to get into more later. Now we can head home and start putting everything together. I had this old aquarium that had a crack at the bottom, so it could no longer be used as an aquarium, but it'll work perfect for a bioactive vivarium. I used aquarium gravel on the bottom for extra drainage. And now I am adding the soil sand mix as a second layer. And the second layer is complete. 
Leopard geckos need a moist hide to help them with shedding, so we made our own. I cut out about a third of this plastic coffee can and then melted the side so there wasn't any rough edges. I then hot glued some glass beads that I had left over from a previous project. I then dug a small hole in the substrate to place the moist hide. It'll be completely buried and then we're going to add some leaf litter on the inside so when we water our plants the water will seep into the moist hide and keep it nice and humid to help them with shedding. And then I just covered it up with substrate. If you fail to provide your leopard gecko with the proper moist hide, it could cost them their toes and even their arms. So be sure to do as much research as possible before you bring your exotic friend home. We are now going to add a layer of mulch and then top it off with our leaf litter. As you can see, we've made quite the mess. We cleaned some driftwood that we had left over from a previous project. I played around with many different branches, but it just wasn't the look I was going for. And then I found this twisting branch that originally came from my grandfather's land and I just fell in love with it. I dug up a chunk of grass from outside that I knew was free from any fertilizers, weed killer, or any kind of chemicals. I also wanted to add this drink well pet fountain that my cats just never really cared for. And this is what we came up with. We have deep substrate off the left of the enclosure. We have some Christmas cactus, some grass, some peppermint plants, vining plants, coleus. And I really like the fountain. I think that the fountain really just sets everything off. In a leopard gecko enclosure, you want to provide them with a warm side and a cool side so they can fluctuate their body temperatures. We purchased this large heating pad off of Amazon and put it under the glass on the hot side. Leopard geckos need heat on their stomachs to be able to digest their food properly. We also ordered a screen cover and some calcium and vitamins for the leopard geckos because I don't think they've ever had any. We took a quick trip to Petco to pick up a few more things that we needed, mostly mealworms and crickets. The crickets quickly made themselves at home. Now let's touch quick on the bioactive cleanup crew. Your cleanup crew is going to consist of isopods, springtails, maybe mealworms, earthworms, anything that's living in the soil and helping break down decomposing matter. A thriving cleanup crew is the vital organs to your bioactive setup and it cannot maintain itself without them. We ordered our isopods, springtails, and millworms online. I added 2,000 millworms to this insect container with EcoEarth as the substrate, with hopes to breed them so we will have an endless supply. Look how fast they ate these apples. The previous owners saved the boxes that they bought the leopard geckos in for easy cleaning. It's time to finally add the geckos. They are just juveniles, so they're smaller, but as you can see, they're severely underweight and missing a toe from improper shedding. This is Turbo. He's the first one in, and he seems very excited to be exploring his new habitat. Here you go, little buddy. And this one's pineapple, coming out from a hideout I made in front of the fountain with a large piece of bark. Now, I have done a lot of research about the argument of housing more than one leopard gecko in the same enclosure. Some will say that you can keep them together if they were raised together, or if you have two females together, or a male and female together. And some people just straight out say that they're just solitary animals and they like to live alone. I disagree with that. We have had these little guys for three months now, and they always seem to want to be together. If they ever do show any aggression, we will separate them. But as of now, I believe they're best friends and they enjoy each other's company. They are always together and sharing the same hideout. They seriously love each other. 
This is Turbo now. Fast forward almost three months later. Leopard geckos like to use the bathroom in the same corner of their enclosure, which is actually really convenient. So he's over here using the bathroom. But you can see how thick his tail has got and how much he has filled out with the proper diet and nutrition. Let's compare now versus three months ago. It's still hard to believe how tiny and skinny he was. This is how he earned his name Turbo. Let's see that again. And how big he is now in just three months. Look how thick his tail is. Leopard geckos store fat in their tails in case they ever go through times of starvation. And here's Pineapple, very underweight, and he also suffered from losing a toe from not shedding properly. Look how big he has gotten. He just looks so healthy and so happy, and he still loves crawling on his bark next to the fountain. And this is where you can usually find them during the day, cuddled up next to each other. I truly believe they enjoy each other's company. It's about that time to wrap up the video. Let's do a recap on what we learned today. Starting with our layers of substrate, your bottom layer is going to be gravel for extra drainage. And then on top of that, you're going to do your sand soil mix. On top of that, you're going to do your nutrient rich mulch. And then you're going to cap it with your leaf litter, about an inch or two for each layer. The other two most important things you need in your setup is as many plants as you can provide. And you absolutely need your cleanup crew. Your bioactive setup cannot be self-sustaining without them. Do as much research as you possibly can. Do your research. Do your research. Do your research. The animal you decide to bring home doesn't have a choice, but you do. Please choose to give them the best quality of life possible and do your research. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them down in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe for future videos just like this one.